Hi, I'm Attila Sabo from the University of Cambridge, a PhD student with Claudio Castanovo, and I'm going to talk about our work on neural network wave functions and the sign problem. Our work is on the archive under this link, and it's going to appear soon in physical review research. So just to give an overview of the talk, Neural network wave functions are, in principle, a very powerful approach to many body quantum physics. But as it turns out, many of the state of the art approaches suffer from the sign problem. And to tackle this problem, we have designed a neural network consults and a corresponding optimization protocol that is tailored for learning these sign structures specifically. And we find that our, our approach works excellently in the for unfrustrated antiferromagnets and it discovers the so-called Marshall sign rules very easily. But for frustrated magnets, what we found is that there are very low energy states which are showing the same sign structure even in a spin liquid phase. And we believe that these may be important for a wider range of numerical methods, not necessarily just for <clears throat> neural network based ones. So, of course, the basic idea behind this work, and we've seen this many times in this conference, is that neural networks can, in principle, represent any function. So there is no reason to believe this doesn't include many body wave functions. And we, in principle, again, we don't have any limitations on the entanglement, nodal structures, and anything else that plagues standard numerical approaches. And also, we can exploit a number of very efficient machine learning codes that are out there. And examples include, the most famous example, of course, is the restricted Boltzmann machine of Kahlo and Troya. But based on that sort of background, deep neural network wave functions of various kinds have been proposed in the literature recently. And what I will point out, and I'm going to come back to it later, is that typically these, these neural networks are taken to represent the log of the wave function, or rather we exponentiate the neural network to get the wave function in order to ensure product extensivity. So the other half of the title, the Monte Carlo sign problem is something that we usually associate with path integral Monte Carlo, where the idea is that we model imaginary time quantum dynamics as a classical stochastic process, but this only works if the Hamiltonian doesn't have any positive of diagonal matrix elements. So Standard quantum Monte Carlo, as we all know, suffers for systems such as antiferromagnets, where we can manifestly see these positive of diagonal matrix elements, and also for fermionic systems, because there it would have to predict the nodal structure, which turns out to be, again, very complicated on without any prior answers to this. And the way this connects to our problem, which is merely predicting what the ground state wave function is going to be, is that in the same sign problematic wave function, uh, sign problematic Hamiltonians, the ground state has both positive and negative amplitudes. And of course, <clears throat> neural networks in principle should be able to learn these signs. But what we find in practice is that when we try to learn it in variation of Monte Carlo, it fails. The, the optimization either blows up or it just fails to converge to a non trivial sign structure. And so, there are many approaches around it. I call them workarounds because, because what I'm trying to do is, is to learn the science directly. But what one can try, for example, is to take a wave function which has a physically well-motivated science structure, such as fermionic mean field wave functions or their Goodsfiller projected versions if one tries to work on a spin system, and use the neural networks as a sort of just factor and hope that they might learn some of the residual sign structure, which is between the mean field wave function and the true wave function, but really they are just there to improve on the amplitudes. And the other approach is to just cure the sign problem where we are able to do so. And what we are going to try to do in this work is to do neither of these, but sort of have, a, have an answer which can do the sign problem curing for itself. Okay, and to put it, put what I'm talking about in a more concrete context and just to show what, where we benchmarked our approach. 
we are going to focus on the J1, J2 Heisenberg model on the square lattice. That is to say, we have spin one halves on the vertices of a square lattice, and we have nearest and second nearest neighbor interactions between them. And this is a very complicated and exciting Hamiltonian, but we can get some insight into it just by going to two opposite limits. One is where we only have the nearest neighbor interactions. And as we know, this, is, this model is unfrustrated because the lattice is bipartite and we end up with a nail order represented by the checkerboard pattern. And also what we know about unfrustrated antiferromagnets is that we can cure that sign problem by imposing the so-called Marshall sign rule, which again has this same kind of checkerboard pattern. The alternative limit is when we don't have any nearest neighbor interactions, only second neighbor interactions. It turns out that this problem is again unfrustrated and this time we end up with a stripey order, which gives rise to its own Marshall sign rule, which has the same kind of stripey structure. If now we go to the J1, J2 models, so we have both of these couplings, we see that this model is now frustrated because of these anti-ferromagnetic triangles going around. And as a result, there is no simple sign structure or a Marshall sign rule that we could impose on it to cure the sign problem. And in fact, we know that the literature knows that between the nail and the stripey orders, we also have valence bond solid and spin liquid phases on the phase diagram. And in this work, we benchmarked our sit. We did benchmarking on two, two points on this phase diagram. One is the nearest neighbor only Hamiltonian, which is unfrustrated. So we expect that there is a simple sign rule that we can directly compare to. And the other one is, is J, J2 over J1 equals a half, where it is believed that the ground state is a spin liquid. Okay, and so going back to neural networks, the sign problem again for us means that learning the amplitudes and the phases together, model them as one neural network, tends to be unstable without any prior knowledge. And this is something Kenny has talked about in the morning session. And what we are going to do about it is to first separate the amplitudes from the phases into two separate real value neural networks. But again, the problem is that if we just take a typical neural network, those tend to fail as an ansatz for the phase. So what we do instead is that we build up a very simple neural network containing just one convolutional layers with kernels spanning the entire lattice and we treat every output from this kernel. So it's in this case, we use 24 kernels, so 24 times the system size as a guess on what the, what the phase, this capital phi should be. And then we found a natural way of adding all these estimates, which is to just treat each of them as a unit complex number, e to the i phi, sum them up, and then take the and take the argument of this long complex number vector on the complex pane, and that is going to be our ansatz for the phase. On the other hand, we find that for amplitudes, a standard deep convolutional network works perfectly fine, so we just stick with those. You have five minutes left. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so now on to the optimization protocol. We try to minimize the variational energy and there are two major ways to do it, stochastic reconfiguration and just stochastic gradient descent. We opted to go for stochastic reconfiguration. And the problem we face here is that the natural optimization of this network for phi is that all of the outputs are close to zero. So we effectively have a sign-free wave function, which is consistent with a ferromagnetic sign rule. So now if we try to start here and learn an anti-ferromagnetic sign structure, that's bound to be unstable. So what we do about this is that we first optimize the phases on their own, keeping all the amplitudes constant, which means that we just switch off this network for the amplitudes. This allows us to get some broadly antiferromagnetic correlations between the phases. And then we can turn on the optimization of both the amplitudes and the phases without blowing up. And just to show some computational results, this is, this is the evolution of of the variation energy in the nearest neighbor model. So this part is the first stage where we only optimize the phases. So we end up with some variation energy. 
And if we turn on the amplitude optimization, we quickly reach a state of the art variation energy, both in the nearest neighbor case and also in the fully frustrated case. And I've put up some, some of the better known state of the art variational approaches, and we can see that that our technique ends up in the same ballpark in terms of energy difference from the true ground state energy. And just to demonstrate this as well, if we use other kind of more standard neural networks to represent the phases, that tends to be unstable, even, and even at this stage, it fails to get anywhere near the optimum, and then it just completely blows up. Okay, and just finally, we, <clears throat> to say something about the actual sign structures of the wave function, we can, we can go and take a sampling of the phases phi that are given by our neural network and compare it to the expected distribution of the signs. But also because our neural network concept is so simple, we can go and directly interpret the kernels as well. So if we go to the unfrustrated case, there we know the answer. We want a perfect Marshall sign rule. And indeed, our network gives that to us with some minor fluctuations around the true Marshall sign rule. And if we look at the kernels, they all essentially look the same as this one. They have a very distinct checkable pattern that we can show is reproducing the Marshall sign rule that is consistent with the nail order. And now if we go to the frustrated case, we see that the kernels are, are developing both of the checkerboard features consistent with the nail order and also stripey features that are consistent with the other ordered phase. So this could in principle be a sign that it's learning the competition between these two sign structures. But unfortunately, if we then go back and sample the phases, we see that they still reproduce the Marshall sign rule. And on the one hand, this, this appears to be a generic problem that frustrated sign structures are very hard to learn as it is discussed in this paper. But also it's possible that Ransatz has a bias for Marshall type sign rules, but we aren't really in the position to judge that properly. And, but anyway, knowing that there, are, that there are states which have such a low variation energy and they, and they still show the Marshall sign rule is an interesting insight into this particular system definitely, but possibly also into spin liquids more generally. And just to conclude, we developed the neural network concepts to capture and learn antiferromagnetic sign structures. And we verified them on the, on the frustrated Heisenberg model on the square lattice. We found that it works excellently for the unfrustrated case, but in the frustrated case, we found that, that it instead homes in on low energy variational states with a Marshall sign rule, which might have some broader implications for variation Monte Carlo in general. And if I have a, a bit more time to give some outlook, as I said a bit before, frustrated sign structures are a difficult object to learn in general. And therefore, it seems that it's important to combine amplitudes and phases in the optimization. But exponentiated deep networks don't seem to be the right direction to go with this. And I believe the reason that is, is that if we, if we represent a wave function as the exponential of something, it necessarily will treat psi equals zero, the wave function equals zero as a special point. And that's a problem because if we start with an all real initial guess and we want to end up in an all real ground state wave function, then the optimization protocol will by necessity cross through this special point and that can lead to all sorts of problems. And there are a couple of different ways in which we could go about this problem. One is, as we've heard in several talks in this conference, is to introduce mean field type states and use backflow transformations and and for spin systems, we can goods a project the same. And there are some very promising work on this. For example, this talk in, which is coming up later in the session. But if we, but if we want to stick to the, to the idea that neural networks can, should be able to represent wave functions on their own without introducing such a huge amount of physical insight into it, we could, I believe we could take tensor networks as an inspiration. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.